Hello doll friends. Happy World Doll Day. This is Michael Canadas with the Grovian Doll Museum and Carmel Doll Shop. Um, I hope you're ready for this because we have Christine Collins Madrid giving us the long and short of it. So I've given her this pointer. <laughs> now she doesn't always follow directions. That is true. She tends to think of that she's conducting a symphony. So I've trained you, which she means you point at what you want to talk about. Alrighty. So, can, can you do it? Yeah, I can do okay, that. Okay, you're in charge. All right. Now, where are you going to begin? Right here? Okay. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. <laughs> I feel like Tinkerbell. Ding, ding, ding. And okay. you're still not what you're supposed okay. to be. <laughs> So the first doll we're going to talk about today, actually we're going to be talking about paper mache's. And this is interesting because in any type of doll or any research that you're doing, you always are going to learn something new. And one of the wonderful things about doing presentations is you're talking about something and someone walks up to you and said, hey, that's not what you think it is. So here is my little example here. We're going to start out. Um, this I bought as a paper mache. I loved her because she looks like everybody's uh, snippy aunt or stepmother. Oh, I think it's a young stepmother. Yeah. Okay, look at that. She is not well, a happy Well, she's kipper. a young girl, but she's going to grow into be the worst stepmother of all she time. Is. Yeah. You know, she is. Uh, this is, you know. Which could be good. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Yeah. yeah if you want your Makes way. It's good stories. Because... The body is the body of a paper mache. It's got the wooden feet, but is it leather or cloth? The, it's leather, leather body. So it's just a feet. case book. Yeah, case paper. book. Milliner's what they call milliner's model body. But we're looking at this, and Michael goes, "Hey, well, you didn't have to bring me into it." Well, I give credit where credit <laughs> okay. is due. It's like I didn't come up with it. He goes, uh, "This isn't paper mache." This is wooden. And you know, it kind of makes sense because honestly, to make a mold like that, with that face, I mean... It's I, a one of. I can't see that as a big seller. No. You know, you, you get a doll once a year and it's like, I want the one that looks like it's smelling something bad. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm saying here is you learn all the time. I am not an expert. Well, what you're saying is you learn when you share. Absolutely. Because you always share your items. Yeah, and the thing is, is that, I, you know, I would not say, I, I say I'm an enthusiastic collector. I wouldn't say I'm an expert because I'm not. But what I am is a very enthusiastic, motivated collector. So when we're talking about paper You machine, actively participate in your hobby. I do, often <laughs> and well. <laughs> Uh, That's how I explain it to my husband, too. Oh, well, he doesn't need to know anything. No, he does Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm still alive. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so paper mache, what is it? It's chewed paper. That's the meaning of the word paper mache. But it really is more of a leather that they make. It's out of byproduct of paper. Uh, it's made with every, every uh, paper mache manufacturer had their own formula and they were closely guarded secrets. And everybody put things from sand to rye to uh, thistle, broccoli, um, you name it, they put it into this mix. And basically what they did is they created almost like a leather. In the beginning, they used to take the, the leather and they used wooden molds. And once the wooden molds, you would put them in the wooden molds. And then when they came out, they would need, need further um, definition. So they would actually use a stick, a molding stick. It was called a uh, bosier. And that was um, how they got more detail or they added a little bit more of the compound to get the definition. So the earlier dolls um, had a lot more definition because they were each um, finished by hand. But in uh, 1818, um, Muller, who was one of the, it was interesting because the big three, I would say, of um, paper mache manufacturers all began a business around the same time, 1805, 1806, 18. And 
they all were developing their formulas at that time and doing their dolls. So in 18... It, it, it sounds like the automobile industry. Exactly, right? mm -hmm. exactly. So in 1818, um, the Voigt company, uh, Johann Andreas Voigt, his company developed the sulfur mold. And that was a huge step forward in the um, production of the paper mache because the molds were more precise and they could be used multiple times so that you would get a consistent result every time you use the mold. So the ability to produce quality dolls exploded. So he was the Henry Ford of yes. paper mache. Yes. And at this time, all three, Kessner, there was Dressel, Voigt, and Mueller, so there's four, were all um, developing. They had multiple lines of dolls. It was just like today. Everybody was trying to compete and bring out the newest and best. So why don't we start with uh, the earliest? So this would be the first period of the paper machés. And I would say this is the period also where the sulfur molds were probably beginning to be in use. And what you see with these dolls is it's the hairstyle with the crown and the curls. They have um, a sweetness and a sophistication to them. Uh, you can see that they have, these three have the um, ampere waist of for, of that period of the 1820s. Uh, the hairstyles, even though they are somewhat elaborate, they are still simplistic when we start to look at some of the later ones. And it very much in line with that period in time, the Regency period, the Empire period, where um, simplicity in dress and um, these hairstyles were uh, basically a reaction to the powdered wigs and the monstrous hairdresses of the prior period, but with um, the French Revolution and, and, and this, the Georgian period, and the Georgian period, and basically a return to a more natural um, silhouette and also a more simple silhouette. And these dolls, really, with their in their simplicity, are quite beautiful. The faces they're elegant. They are elegant. I think that's a wonderful word. This one is. Look at the hair on her back. I mean, she's got a beautiful profile. Oh, yes. This one on the top, she is all original. Her dress is a little bit later, but she is a uh, Mueller, um, wonderful doll. Um, you can see the wooden hands. I mean, this is a really big doll. It is how, a big how doll. How tall is it? Do you she's, know? I think, 28 inches. That's a lot of... That is a lot of paper mache. That is a lot of paper and mache. And leather and wood. Well, it's interesting too, because in the 1820s, they started to have tariffs based upon weight. And what you can find is the later dolls are getting lighter. And paper mache is a medium that allows you to do that. So one of the things about Mueller is he used a, um, a water-based varnish on his dolls. And so a lot of them have that matte complexion, but originally, originally they were, um, they did have a varnish on them. Um, so this one is a Mueller, Mueller, and this one we attribute to Mueller also. Well, I think what's interesting about that, Chris, is when these were marketed originally in the trade catalogs, they called them varnished heads. Yes. Which is not a particularly attractive. Well, it's oh my like, God, is your head varnished? I know. It's like, oh my God, I'm getting a varnished head for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but these are beautiful dolls. They're, they're not, no, I would say none of these are rare. I mean, I, rare is a very overused well, word, but I, they're not, I, not. I disagree with you. Okay. Because if you decided that you wanted to go and this year, and say, find this doll. Oh, good luck. And think that since you said they're not rare, so yeah. that would mean that they're plentiful. And you decided, I want one of these in every size. It's not going to happen. No. 
and uh, you might get you if you're lucky you might get one I know well uh, that's and actually I've never seen this face again yeah um, she has a very I think what we should say is sometimes they're sitting in shops not being appreciated and, yeah. s and s snatched up yeah um, I do th I do think these are underappreciated um, because some of them, a lot of them, don't really stand the test of time between the varnish and the materials. And, um, you know, you have formulas that have, well, some of them didn't make it. Some of them had formulas with rye and breadcrumbs and vegetables. And, you know, you used a high and, glue. And just, you're, you're a mathematician. Do the math. All of, all of this group, they're all now in the 200-year-old range. Yeah. So it's a it's a miracle. I it mean, really is. It really is. And they do these these have you know pretty simple bodies, with the with the shoes, which I love. These. Yeah, the the, the proportions are always. Yes, and funny. then this one has such a beautiful head, but then once again she has you know her little. Those are actually sweet, but they do go out to the side when you're she's on a stand. Well, well, nobody's perfect. Yeah, my feet aren't perfect either, and. So we've gone through the early stage, and um, we've agreed to disagree that I think they're actually very rare. And now I've 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 turned you into a believer that they're very okay. rare. Well, I have a rare collection. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Okay. Yay me! So okay. where are we going to go next? We're going to go next to the next um, where you see this beautiful. Um, silhouette become a little more wild. Okay. Uh, so we're going into the 1820s, 1830s, into the 40s, and we get to these wonderful uh, high hairdos. Uh, Polo knot, this is a lovely one that has her little um, bonnet. And um, the great thing about paper mache is that you can create all of that detail in the paper mache because it was a wonderful material. It was very. And I mean, imagine wigs. If you had to try to wig a doll, too. I know. It, I know. I mean, it would be. It, it would be so hard to do this. This one's wonderful. I've, this one. Oh, oh wonderful. yes. Okay. So we'll take a you look. You got a pointer. Use I know. It. I know it. But look at the back of this hair. Oh yeah. This would have been a comb. Uh, this is a little. I don't know what that is, but. Um, Actually, in this period of time, and through the um, the 1860s, hair uh, was a real commodity. In 1859, 500 tons of hair were imported to make wigs for women and also for dolls. Dolls? Oh my mm -hmm. God! And so uh, they got the the brown hair came from Germany. Uh, black hair came from Brittany, but they would actually go to the countryside, the French countryside, and they would go and they'd have a fair and the girls would take off their bonnets and let down their hair. And they would come up and they'd wait in line and they'd shear them just like sheep. Oh, wow. And they would sell that hair. And you know, I believe Victor Hugo wrote about that. Yeah, and so um, it was a cash crop but 50 tons of hair wow. to make hair because hair pieces there's and... no way. I know we're jumping a little bit, but if you just wanted to turn the camera around. Well, you point and I will. It would take a massive amount yes. of hair. To make a wig like to that. To make a mm -hmm. wig like that. Yeah, totally. And women would not, and these would be pieces. They would that, all be hair pieces. Right. A little hair piece here, one on the top. They'd have little braids. I mean... the uh, Not this Victoria um, miniseries, but the one before. There's a very good se uh, um, sequence where the Duchess of Kent comes in and she gets ready for bed and she takes she literally takes her hair off and it's one piece and another piece and that is one of the things they got right in the all the add-ons she added to right. her hair. Right, and to get some of these, you know, the Apollo knots and the big loops, they would um, 
used sugar water. Mm -hmm. They oh, used yeah. beer, bear grease. They used pretty much anything. It was interesting because in 1817, um, there was a hairdresser called Lafoy, and he actually wrote a book about hairdressing and um, about that is the most uh, important art is hairdressing. When you think about this and you look at these dolls, it was like, what an important part of the presentation, you know, oh, in your outfits and everything else. Because, I mean, let's face it, if you have money to buy a lot of hair, that's, you know, the dress says one thing, but the hair also says something else too, oh, totally. that you've got a lot of money to be able to pull off a hairdo like that. So. Well, I'm only working with Larry Curley and Mo, so I do the best <laughs> I can. <laughs> I just... But, you know, it's interesting because you would think, wow, that's amazing. But think about now with people with their extensions. Oh, it's the same I mean, concept. Yeah, it's the same concept. You know, you're weaving them in and you're making them Well, Chris, and... we're of a certain age where we remember when the ladies went to the beauty parlor and had their hair done. And then they had their wiglets. Done. Yep, their wiglets, and then they would they would wrap their hair with uh, paper, uh, yeah. what toilet paper at night, yeah, so that they keep their set for all week. But yeah, yeah. the little wiglets. <laughs> so it, it is a concept that's been around, around, mm -hmm. and it continue, you know, and it conti it continues. And the art of the hairdresser is a huge part of it really the is. economy. It is. I mean, when um, uh, uh, the Kennedy assassination, hairdressers were devastated because Mrs. Kennedy was so uh, inspirational for their businesses, um, you know, with her innovative hairstyles. I know. So it's, that's really just not that far away, really, unfortunately, from, from the time we're talking about. I know. And, and one of the, the lovely things about these dolls is that it preserves the actual hairstyle because, except for the wigs, they couldn't be combed. So the way it was put on the doll, the you know the long curls or the well, we could go back. Shall we go back and look we'll at the dolls? We'll go this way, yeah. Because we we're can chatting. We talk. can talk forever. So we've got this little girl here, who has her long curls. This is a girl, a little girl, and look at the how wonderful that is. Oh, I mean that this girl had a luxurious head of hair and have those big fat mm -hmm. sausage curls. Mm -hmm. And so, and these are to the... Is she, uh, you know, you flipped her around fast and I didn't see, is she glass-eyed? She's glass-eyed, yeah. Oh, that's really wonderful. Isn't she pretty? Oh, oh, oh. oh she's, on a, she's on a pass, oh. so that's what's happening. Okay. But what a face. And all that detail and then the glass eyes have to go up through the neck. And, I know, it's crazy. And, and, and they're not wonky at all. No. And then these, these are sort of of the same time period. Children. Children. Because mm. um, you could tell because their, their dresses are short. And their necks are short and fat. Yeah. And then... Um, Although she's kind of slightly like maybe a, a, a pre-teen. Yeah, I think, I think she and this one too has a little... Well, look at those one. curls though. I know. Easy, okay. easy to get distracted. Okay. And then she looks a little older. She does. She does. And they have the typical um, and then milliner's is... model. Now this one, if you can look at the back of those curls, I'll turn her around. Oh, it's fabulous. And this doll is beautiful. She is 28 inches with her body. And she has the um, milliner's model body at 28. Um, it's um, in the auto shop right now. Well, but, that happens. Yeah, I mean, that's... Again, a, she's a, almost a 200-year-old doll. But so. also, too... Um, that's a lot of weight, and they have those little bitty waists. And I don't actually. I think it's kind of wonderful to have it as a shelf piece too. Yeah, she's a beautiful. I mean, I, we. I'm, I mean, you need to get her back on her body. But, yeah. But I think it's fine. But she's got this, and I mean, this is. I, I, you know, I don't know, and this is why I'm saying attributions. Her face does not look like Muller to me, but Muller typically had this lip, and. Um, the breast definition on his dolls, but she's... Do you know what I think she's Kestner? And I did too. Do you? Okay. I do, I, I do. Because when you get into the eye paint, it's very similar. Yeah, and it's that's what I'm saying what though, is that if you just go by certain cues, I don't think you're necessarily going to get it right. Yeah. And that's why I think to say attributed to. Yeah. 
and the more you compare them, then I think you start to have a better idea. Yeah. So um, this group here is contemporaneous a little bit later. These all have the long, most of them have the long side curls. Like this little girl here who has glass eyes. Oh, that's fabulous. And uh, she, instead of just having the curls in the back, they have uh, buns. Oh, fun. And this one's wonder wonderful. I, su she, I suspect she's either Muller or an unknown um, maker. Because she's quite, her face is very... Um, um, I think she, I think she may also be Kessner. Really? We have, we have this in maybe one size smaller. Oh, see, I'm learning something mm -hmm. too. This is, see, this is a It's just thing. a guess. It I is. Mean, it, I mean, we can only attribute. Right. And so this one is wonderful um, because, move her head. She actually has a band of hemp. This is hemp. Oh, wow. Wrapped around her head. And they just painted it in to match. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And then this little girl has the same hers. Her she has the higher bun in the back. And then this is a you know this one's undressed. She has the typical milliner's model model. But that's body. a tiny doll. Very tiny doll. But that's what I'm saying is that this is a this medium of paper mache is really something that could be easily scaled up, scaled down, and the detail on this doll oh, yes. is not that much different from the detail on this doll. Right. Because it's, because... They had good quality molds. Right, mm -hmm. right. And their consumer w uh, understood crafting. Yes. That things had to be beautifully crafted. Right. I mean, ladies learned how to china or, uh, paint and sketch, and uh, so they would have a a very nice aesthetic for her. Yeah. Another doll that we can look at here is called a Kinderhoff. And um, clearly meant to be a child. This actually was the first paper mache doll I purchased. And I purchased it from Michael and David. And uh, I still love the doll. I mean, that face is adorable. And look, it's and once got again, great little clothes. Uh, wonderful little clothes. And, and once again, the molding and the painting is wonderful. And the wonderful little wispy curls. Yes, yes. It's, I'm sorry, people, it's so small, it's hard to get it focused because it is a tiny little piece. And then we have next to. So that started all this. Right. And then this is a boy, and you can tell by the side part that that was meant to be a boy. And he has this wonderful original outfit. And you can see that we, we've talked about this in our other videos that we've done, that he's, he's, he's been breached. He's wearing pants. Exactly. So he's now at an age where they try to hair-wise have a, a differentiate right. the, the sexes. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of an important. Uh, Very important. I to mean, have that. Very important. Because we think today boys only pants where they wore for, uh, until they were breached, a dress. Right, no, no, and I mean, I, it's interesting because um, I have a picture of my great-grandmother and my grandfather and his brother, Frank, and it was from the 1880s, 90s, and Frank has on a velvet suit and with a, a skirt, and he has curls down to his shoulder. Oh yeah, I yeah. have that in my family yeah. too. Yeah, so anyway, so this is another, this is an all original Kessner. Once again, small size. What's lovely about her, her dress is a beautiful color. It's, it's melting, unfortunately, but she has, the, her shoes match the same color. Oh, that's lovely. Isn't that? And then she has her little necklace that kind of matches her band. And I believe that this type of costume was something that was a commercially made costume because I, I, through the last 40 years, I've seen that mm -hmm. a, a few times. And it can't be just a, a coincidence. No, no. And then these are, this is another wonderful little one. Um, in a, you know, she, once again, uh, she has the milliner model, model body, but beautiful little um, kind of region, regional costume. 
Yes, and, it, and you know, uh, the one thing about most of these dolls is when you do find them, if they did survive, they'll usually have old clothes on them. Yeah. You know, because it is a, a collector that likes a certain aesthetic. Yeah, because, you know, these, these can be in uh, pleasing decay yeah. a lot of times. And you have to be um, someone who can, mm -hmm. who can live with that. Yeah, yeah. And then these wonderful things, these are all Kessner. I'm, she, I think she's Kessner. She actually I do too. has she has real hair. Oh yeah, they did that. Yeah. And then this is right out of his catalog. Oh, um, I just am so envious, I can't believe it. And then the little tiny guy over here. Look at them with the yellow legs. Isn't he wonderful? So this is paper mache, but this is a hybrid. Oh, yes, isn't this it? is actually called. It's on the wooden body, and Kessner did the entire doll. He did the heads. He bought a, a, a factory that did the wooden bodies, and um, he was very innovative. And he made Michael did a, a great program on series on Kessner. And he's what what is true about Kessner? There is no such thing as a badly. Produced no. Kessner. The no, dolls could be badly restored or yes, badly treated. Yes, but the dolls are really well done. Yeah, high They're quality. beautiful, mm -hmm. very high quality from the very beginning all the way up through the bisque. I mean, look at this doll; it's beautiful. Look at this. I do. I so explain to the audience. It appears to be a wooden doll, but there's something in the manufacturing that's a little bit different. It's yes. almost a shortcut, I think. Yes. So I think. A lot of this might have been because you can't get that kind of detail in a wooden doll. So this at that is, size. Yeah, of that size. So they they did. Uh, this is paper mache, molded on to the little wooden bodies. So it's applied. It's applied. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you looked, if this head broke off, what you would see would be a um, peg sticking up. Okay. So and they then just they, kind of shoved the body up into. Yeah, and they molded it around that. Did a little and hand then work. Um, John Darcy Noble actually was the one who coined the phrase alien heads. So this is an alien head, um, and this little guy is. And then, so they could actually really be in both classifications. You know, I mean, they're a little bit wood and they're a little bit yeah. paper mache. You and I had that discussion too because a couple of years ago we were we were collaborating on something and it became to is it wood or is it paper mache? But it's really both. Yeah, uh, I agree. But I do think that it needs to be identified as an alien head. I think that's a good term. And I mean, but please, it, people don't write us letters. Yes, we, we know. It's, you know it's, it's just a name. <laughs> Milliner's model is just a name. We know yeah. they're not it's a, right. It's, it's a descriptive, right? Giving you a, a, a description, giving you a visual. Right, right. Because it's like, here's my body, and then you. Because slap if we it really want to get real, this is a varnished head. Yes. And she doesn't like to be called a varnished no, head. No, no one likes to be called a varnished <laughs> head. Now this little one, this is uh, alien head. And this, you think she's taller, but she's not. Oh yeah, they did that. That's a, a regular trick in, in the antique yeah. dolls. Yeah, little bitty. Because then they could sell it for more because yeah. it looked like it was a bigger doll. Little teeny legs, but mm -hmm. fully articulated and uh, wonderful molded hair. I mean, I'm impressed. Oh yes, I mean, and small is not easy to do. No, no. Uh, uh, making or painting. Okay, where are we going to go next? We are going to go to, uh, we're going to take a look at some Kinder Coughs. All right, now these are wonderful. They, Kinder Coughs were basically uh, the, doll, the, the child heads, and they would either have this hairstyle, they would have this curly, like the little one we looked at. These two are different because they actually have flirting eyes. Mm, fun. And can, that... Can we see him flirt? Absolutely. This one flirts a lot. I mean, scary oh, yeah. flirt. she is. And this fun. one's a little more subtle. Oh, that's wonderful. They're both wonderful. They're wonderful. Now, we we know that this uh, patent was the, was by um, Frange. And from what we know, um, Voigt was the only one who used that patent. So if you see these dolls, we believe that they were 
uh, made by Voight, and they were made in a lot of different sizes. This one is sort of slumpy, but she's quite large. And she's, ju and she's just actually very cuddly. She is. I she's a sweetheart. I with her. She's, she's very, very sweet. Mm -hmm. So she's and uh, she's very much a child doll. I mean, look at the neck. Oh yes. And like I said, Ernest Conrad, who was he? He was uh, he did um, modeling. And I'm sure this is based on a, a living child. Oh yeah, I mean, young child, basically with the very. Chubby. You know what, Chris? What I think is interesting about these uh, pieces, there's a lot of early folk art paintings and things that cost, you know, millions of dollars, and here we've got three-dimensional folk art really in is. a doll form. I know. You know, with the right everything. I mean, and they're just, you're right. I mean, you can see it from every angle. They're really And like this one, it has the crackling of a, of a, uh, a historic painting would have, and uh, this one does not, but it's still just, you know, wonderful pieces. All right, I mean, but, but you know, you look, she has the cracklature, but she, is a little more bleached out. She probably got a little more sun on her, but they're still wonderful. Yes. Very, very appealing And dolls. cuddly with these big fluffy bodies. <laughs> very cuddly. They are, and, and there's, they made quite a few different molds with the um, flirty eyes and different sizes. There's big ones, and at one point I said I thought this was the smallest, and I am not, I was not correct. Somebody corrected me, and they sent me one that was about that high. Oh, wow. Yeah, the picture, which I wanted, but they didn't offer me the doll. Oh, well, you'll get it. <laughs> you'll get it. Okay, where are we going to go next? Now we're going to uh, move over to the same manufacturer, which is Voight. So now let's talk about Voight. And Voight is a manufacturer who really made amazing dolls. But the interesting thing is what you're looking at here are probably, not, maybe not all, but some of these were probably uh, Bebe's Parisian. And we know this because Voigt provided dolls to French doll makers. So Eracy was the largest doll manufacturer in France and he imported heads from Voigt. And they were called manufacturers, but they actually were the assemblers. So they would get these high quality heads from Germany and then put them on beautiful kid bodies, which you can We've see. We've got an example there. This little- Can you hold that up? This little guy here, if you see, um, what you'll see is... That's a basically a French, French what we body. call a French fashion body. But you also see them in pink often. Right. These, these dolls are and in I, pink. And I'm sure he was pink, but he yeah. just faded. Well, yeah, he actually, you can see that he does have the... And what happened is they would put them on these really quality bodies and then dress the dolls in. And what, one of the things you see also with these dolls is that one of the important things about them was the wig. So the assemblage of the doll was a head from Germany, but it was the wig, it was the body, and it was the beautiful costumes that these dolls were presented in. Because in the, really in the 19th century, it was who made the body was considered the, right. the creator of the doll. The exactly. head wasn't that important. Exactly. And so... If you look at these dolls, they really are very um, elegant. I feel oh, yes. this is the first. Uh, this is the first phase, 1820s to 1830s. With the open nostrils. Too. Open nostrils, long face, uh, lady doll. They have the black paint. Um, and then she had a wig. She has a wig, which is beautiful. It's a little mm -hmm. lovely. She came down in a convertible, so it could... <laughs> Well, she's, she's an old girl. She needs yeah, to and she's about 30 inches. And you do find a few of these. I'd have another one I didn't bring uh, about the same size who has, she's probably a little later, and the reason I would say she's later is she actually has a wardrobe. Oh, wonderful. Yes. And so this is the later 
of what they would call the fashion dolls. And what happens, you have a slightly rounder face. Childlike. Childlike, but still, and then you would have the bamboo teeth. So when you see, this is like for, this is like a doll A and doll B, but these were still dressed as ladies. A lot of times you see them in regional costumes, but the costumes and the wigs on these dolls are beautiful. And, and he looks like he's in a in a fancy dress type yeah, of costume. Yeah, he, he's, yeah, that's obviously not. Somebody needs to tell him his barn door is open. <laughs> so this is a great representation of what you would see. Um, and one of the wonderful things about her is she actually has flirty eyes. Um, oh, once she's, again. she's nice and early too. Yes, so she has this very early face, beautiful eyes, and this gorgeous dress. And it looks to me, are those, those are, it looks like amazing wooden hands. Yes. Can you show them? Oh yeah, those are very look at that. lovely. Aren't I forgot they wonderful? that she had those. I know, me too. See, this is why we do programs. Look at this with oh, their little shoes. shoes. Lovely. Wonderful girl, wonderful girl. And I think she may flirt today. Sometimes she doesn't like to flirt, but also see, once again, she has that beautiful, uh, which even if they don't have the wigs, how beautiful those pates are. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And she's a beautiful little bonnet. Well, maybe she doesn't want to flirt. Yeah, no, not today. Now, that's a wig. That is, girl, and once again, you see this is a little bit later. She's got the bamboo teeth, but once again, she has this elongated face, clearly a lady. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Uh, she's got oh. the same thing with the fingers, uh, very well. Separated fingers. Separated fingers, and she has the white body, or the, the kid body. Fabulous. But these, these dolls really, and then this little one, um, I love this, this, I actually have two, but someone decided to help, and th they actually- She had this, a haircut. She, she had a hair, well, she, she had hair that I had to take, but they put these slits in, and that's how they put- um, A part. A part in, so if you look at this doll. Oh, she's got a nice, oh she's yeah. She's got the part. Oh, a nice hairstyle. Nice mm -hmm. hairstyle, and if you look behind, her hair is a completely different color back here. Yeah, because they were just putting- Yeah, they were just throwing on a, mm -hmm. Once again, they were taking what they could get with hair. Right. But I noticed she has painted eyes. She has painted eyes. So this had to be a, probably a little cheaper version. Yes. Of the... Yes. And, and you know, if you see too, I would say this, this doesn't scream French to me. Because, I mean, Avoid was still selling to yeah. other markets. Sure. It wasn't just to France. But anyway, he they sold to. Or it could be a French doll, but a cheaper version. Right. So he sold to Heresy. Heresy's. Um, uh, got adopted daughter, uh, married Belton, and they got half of the company, or 10,000 10, francs worth of the company. And then the deal was that if his two nieces married within six years, then uh, they would also have ownership in the country, in the company. So Belton was a traveling salesman for this because it was not only dolls, it was novelties and the and he met um, Jumeau. Pierre Jumeau. Pierre mm -hmm. Jumeau. So there you go. There's Pierre your connection. Pierre Jumeau. They, he met the daughter, Adele Am Amelie. They got married. And there you go. And so when, uh, it was very sad because um, Adele died in childbirth when she was 23. But it was interesting, in 1843 was when she died, they actually had a copy of her estate inventory. And in the estate inventory, they cataloged these dolls, heads, how many dozens, how many white bodies, how many pink bodies, how many flirty eyes. Oh, fun. And, um, and they actually had molded hair, but it also helps to bring back the connection between Voight and Jumeau. Fun. So these little guys, um, this is a wonderful doll. This is, um, look at the hair on this doll. Oh, yes. And so it's like one. The, the coronated Queen Victoria. Yeah, look at this with the mm -hmm. separated and then the little 
um, so rosette. So we're talking late 1830s. Yes, 1830s, clearly with this hairstyle. I believe so this... So we've gone a little bit in time right. back. Because we went through Voight. Actually, now we're... you know, when I'm looking through at the camera, she looks like Queen Victoria. Very much. Yeah, she's a beautiful doll. Really, really beautiful. I, I think she's Kestner. I agree. Mm -hmm. You know, I do think she's Kestner, and I think this this will be getting mail. <laughs> I know, I know. Attributed to. We're guessing. We're not saying it is Kestner, but if you look at this doll and you look at these dolls, this doll is of the quality of these. I, I agree. You yes. know. And then we have this little to finish chunky it off, monkey. We have a little chunky monkey. Also, I believe to be a Kessner. Oh yes, I think so too. We turn her around. An amazing hair. And wig. look at that hair. Mm -hmm. and wonderful clothes too. Wonderful clothes, wonderful presentation with her little, and what a sweet little face. Her and she's looking slightly, if we're gonna uh, be name droppers, she's looking slightly uh, Mary Todd Lincoln. Yeah, actually, you're right. But she could be, uh, I mean, she, uh, she's obviously dressed as a, a lady, but she could be a e child, too. Easily a child. Look at the neck. I mm -hmm. mean, look at the difference between but these the hair, two. But the hair, the hair is, yeah. is a, uh, that is a lady style. Yeah. A woman's hair is her crowning glory. That's right. So this pretty much concludes our program. Uh, and the reason it was called the long and short of it is the amazing versatility of the material paper mache to make dolls and you know from 30 inches to maybe two inches uh, still translates beautifully and michael reminded me that even though i said that they're common they're really not when you start to look at a particular type and i think that if you would say like he said for instance if i wanted to collect just dolls that look like that i'm it's going to be dry spells for sure and it's really an amazing very varied um, area of, of collecting um, you can get in for not a lot of money and you can learn along the way and um, very satisfying and i would like to thank you all for your attention and michael for having me and uh have a wonderful doll. Day. Michael and David, Michael for and having David. you. Michael and David. Because if you yeah. don't say that, you I won't know, get any I dinner. Just, I know. <laughs> Michael and David for having me. David feeds the uh, yes. army. Yes, and I am an army <laughs> all by myself. <laughs> all right. Well, Chris, thank you. That was really great. And uh, I will pack up the dolls that I want of the group. All right. Because since you don't, you know. I think they're common. <laughs> <laughs> I take that back. <laughs> All right. I'm taking my pointer thank right now. You again, thank you so much. Thank you, and happy doll day, everybody.